Hey everyone. So this is a continuation of the teaching in the Heart Sutra on no death, humetsu, or indestructibility, immortality. Zen has a lot to say about immortality, yet even more importantly, Zen is a practice, the practice of no death, no birth. What does it mean to practice? It's not just about being smart and thinking about no birth and no death, it's about living it. And when we live with a sense of no death, fear is annihilated. So if you haven't seen the two previous videos I produced on no birth, no death, take a look at those first. They provide a context for this. The first one is how no birth, no death is perceived or conceived of in the Zen tradition, from my understanding. And the second one is introducing the scientific uh, understanding or, or how science can help us understand no death. In this particular video, I'd like to share a little bit about how uh, Hinduism speaks or talks about no death. Now, the wonderful thing about Hinduism, I'm not, I'm not Hindu, but I find the teachings in the Bhagavad Gita extraordinarily helpful for understanding something very similar to the Zen tradition. And the, the gift of Hinduism is that it offers us a story with which to understand no birth, no death. And the story, so it's one thing to have a philosophical concept, say, no birth, no death, right? If you have a mind that's oriented towards philosophy, maybe you can get your mind wrapped around that concept. But for most of us, for many of us, it's helpful to hear us hear this in story form. And if you've never read the Bhagavad Gita, I would highly recommend reading it. This particular translation I have is called the Living Gita, and it has commentary by Sri Swami Sachidananda. I got a chance to study with his community in Yogaville when I did yoga teacher training. And I've found that the, the philosophical aspects of, of Hinduism are highly compatible with, with Zen Buddhism, as well as the, the Hatha yoga practices, which enable us to, to really settle more deeply into our body. So I have lots of videos uploaded on uh, integral yoga. If you'd like to see those, check them out. Here, here, there's a section in the Bhagavad Gita I'd like to share. So let me give you a little bit of context for the story of the Bhagavad Gita. This is a story about a, a war between two families. And one of the one of the, the characters, the main character, his name is Arjuna. And his job, his duty, his sacred duty is to fight because he's a warrior. That's his caste. That's the caste system that he was born into. Similar to the Buddha. The Buddha was born into the warrior caste called the Kshatriya caste in Hinduism. And Arjuna is in this situation where he has to fight his own relatives. And this begins to present to him a major problem. He draws up close to the battle line and he sees his own cousins, his own teachers, family members that have taught him. And now he's, because of the deceit and the injustices of his cousins and his family members, he's now confronted with having to fight and kill. Now, we can spend time talking about why killing is wrong or why that breaks the precepts, etc. That's not the, this is not the place or time for that particular discussion, although that would be an interesting discussion as well. I want to invite you to think of this story as a metaphor, as a symbolism. Well, regardless of what you think about fighting or, and war, this is a symbol because each one of us has quote unquote wars to fight 
maybe we're not, we're not carrying a gun or a sword, but we have some wars to fight. In other words, we have to put effort into our life. We have to put some effort into our life. And there's going to be times when it's really, really difficult. There might be times when we're even faced with life and death. And here Arjuna is faced with his own life and death. It's all coming before him because he's got to fight his own family. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to fight and kill his own family members. But he's lucky he has a guide with him. His guide is Lord Krishna. And he doesn't know it in the earlier parts of the story, but Lord Krishna is God in the form of a human being. Right? He is God, the God Vishnu, the sustainer of the universe. And Vishnu comes in human form, in the form of Krishna, in times when the, when the world is in peril. He comes as a guide to guide human beings. And so in the story, Arjuna has to fight and he has to kill his own family, but he doesn't want to. And so Krishna happens to be his guide in his chariot. And he gives him all kinds of wonderful wisdom on how to orient his mind to what he needs to do. And I want to I want to uh, quote one of the one of the lines from Lord Krishna. He says to Arjuna, "There never was a time when I did not exist." He's talking about himself now. Vishnu, this is God. There was never a time when I did not exist. And maybe we can get our minds, especially if we come from a Christian background, we can get up, get our, our minds wrapped around a, an idea of God that has been in existence for forever. It is. But here, the, the second line is a little bit more challenging. It says, okay, the first line is, there never was a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor any of these ruling princesses, princes, and neither will there ever come a time when we cease to be. And he's not just talking about Arjuna and the princes. He's talking about you and me. So here, here in story form, you have Krishna imparting this wisdom to Arjuna. And Arjuna just can't, he doesn't get it. So he, he asks Krishna more and more questions. He wants to understand more and more until finally he gets this realization of what Krishna is saying here, that there never was a time when he did not exist, nor will there ever be a time when you don't exist. And so whatever challenges we are faced with, keeping this truth in mind, the truth of no birth, no death, can help us to eliminate anxiety and fear about our life. And that's not to say anxiety and fear won't return, because it does. That's the nature of emotions, they're impermanent. But with the insight of no birth, no death, and, and to really experience it, we will also simultaneously experience no anxiety, no fear. Now, in Arjuna's case, his realization of no birth, no death comes through continually questioning Lord Krishna. And so I would invite you to like Arjuna, continue to question, what does it mean, no birth, no death? Perhaps pick up a copy of the, the Bhagavad Gita and see how Ar Arjuna questions Krishna. Or you could do your own questioning. What does this mean, no birth, no death? I hope you'll keep your, your curiosity alive when it comes to this philosophical concept. And if it helps you to enter into the story of the Bhagavad Gita to understand it more deeply, that could be a very productive way for understanding no birth, no death. Here's the verse again. Lord Krishna is speaking here. Ready? There never was a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor any of these ruling princes, and neither will there ever come a time when we cease to be.